Hey y'all, it's Nathan here, and welcome back to the Garrett Racing Team's Race Shop. This is where you're going to find everything that we do with maintaining this race car, doing setups, prep work, anything that we need to do to get this race car to and from the track each time we go, uh, and to compete at, at the highest level that we can. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you on this ride that we're having with this race car here. All the stuff that we get done on it, I think you'll find a lot of good information on it. If you're returning, guys, I really appreciate your support every time you come back. It really does help us. We're doing a lot of good stuff with this thing, making a lot of good progress, as you've seen. Had a lot of great, great work that's being done on this stuff that hopefully you're learning from. And it's actually keeping me dedicated to keeping this car in tip-top shape and getting us to and from the racetrack each week. So, you may be wondering... All right, what's the, uh, what's the deal for tonight? I had a photo of uh, the radiator on my, I guess, for the thumbnail on this thing and, uh, you know, what's, what's actually going on. So the main drawing point for that is I actually upgraded the cooling system on this race car last season. So the last video that we did, and there will be a link here at the end that I'll show you on upgrading our cooling system fans. So we did a single mount fan to a dual mount fan setup. So that was part one, basically, of our upgrade. The second part was we actually had a new radiator that we put in, and we also ended up upgrading our water lines and how they ran on this thing. Uh, so that we basically went away from the push-on style uh, fittings that your hose it just kind of goes up on like a hose barb to an AN style type fitting that, uh, that you see on like fuel lines and that type of thing. So you actually have to have a uh, wrench to get them off. They have like a swiveling head, but a little bit of a challenge to get done and fabricate the right way by cutting the hoses and everything. But once it's installed, it makes a really simple and really quick way of disassembling and reassembling your cooling system once you're at the track having problems or any of that type of thing. So it's a little bit more work up front, a little more expense, but once you're up and running, guys, it's, it's really the way to go. Makes it clean, makes it really nice, and I'll show you all that in this video coming up. So be sure to stay tuned, watch all the way to the end. You can see exactly how we did everything. We actually had to use a, a basically a metal cut saw or chop saw to cut the the tubing and everything for the uh, for the water lines, and also we added an expansion tank, a new style on top of the intake. So you'll see this silver looking can that's sitting on top of our intake that we're basically using to uh, let the water expand for for the high temperatures and pressures that we have, uh, and it allows the car to stay cool and operate correctly. So, guys, that's basically going to be it for the intro. We're going to get you in here. Let you see what we've got going on with this deal. And we're going to keep putting stuff out there, guys. If you got any comments, questions, be sure to put that in the comment section below. I'll be sure to follow up with you. And uh, if you haven't already, guys, like this video, share it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page at Garrett Racing Team. All of it really does help. Helps us get around the track faster, be more competitive, and gets this ride going pretty good for us, y'all. Thank you. Let's get in here and get to it. All right, give a quick rundown on the parts that we're gonna be using to do this quick project. And to start off with, we're gonna put this new style expansion tank on my intake. And as you can see, right now I have no intake expansion tank or neck or any of that type of thing that normally would come out of that hole there with a water line. So we're gonna, we're gonna go with a new style here. I've already actually cleaned, cleaned this up. As you can see, I took a uh, basically a drill with a wire brush and cleaned all the excess gray Permatex off that I was using as a gasket maker. Uh, we're going to go back and put gray gasket maker on once we're ready, along with a ru rubber O-ring that will help seal the water off. Uh, also, instead of using bolts, we're going to chop this threaded rod here and make two threaded rods come out of each threaded hole, uh, and that will help affix the uh, expansion tank on with two nuts. On top of that, we've got some new style JIC fittings quick connect they just screw onto these uh, water lines that are they're actually rubber water lines but they have a basically a braided uh, steel coating on the outside so it kind of protects everything makes everything look clean and nice uh, and i've also got to cut an existing one i got here's a little bit too long so anyways we'll get started with that we'll start on the expansion tank first and as i go through this i'll walk you through each step of the way as i get it done kind of explain what i've got going on so let's get to it y'all so went ahead and put my expansion tank on top of the intake and actually measured out how long of a threaded watt rod I'm gonna need to attach the thing. So I went in there, screwed it all the way in and double nutted it, jam nutted the threaded rod and got it tight. 
and uh, measured up how far I needed to go. If you can see this black mark here is where I need to cut it. So I'm going to use this grinder here. And when I grind this off, I'm going to cut it. And then what you can do is when you get done, you can go back with these jam nuts and basically unscrew them over the cut threads. And it'll actually clean the threads up for you so you don't have to really worry about it uh, messing the threads up or anything like that. So uh, once we get this done, I'm going to put it on the uh, car silicone everything and kind of show you how all that looks also before i forget always wear safety glasses when you grind you never want to get a piece of hot molten metal in your eyeball because if you do you got to go to the eye doctor and they'll use a drill a tiny one to drill the metal out of your eyes so just wear the plastic eyeglasses and be done with it so that's what i'm going to do try to be safe y'all so the threaded rods are finished i got all of them done cut to the exact length and everything looks pretty good uh, also, we put some anti-seize on the threads. Uh, this is a stainless uh, threaded rod going into an aluminum intake. Uh, you don't want any of that stuff between the heat cycles and everything else seizing on you and you can't get it back out. So I got all of it done and everything looks good as you can see. Then I ran into one problem. Trying to put this on. I don't have enough room to sl actually slide this on over with my carburetor on. So I thought I was doing a smart idea using threaded rods, but actually I'm going to have to go back and use my bolts. So wasted a little bit of time here trying this out, had an idea, but it didn't work. So that's part of the game sometimes. Uh, I'm going to take this off. I would rather use the bolts and put it on and off and have the threaded rods because if I have the threaded rods, I'm going to take my carburetor on and off every time I pull my expansion tank off. So Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and get get these back out, put my bolts in, and bolt the expansion tank down. And once that's done, I can show you where all the fittings are going to go. Well, the expansion tank's on now. I uh, went with the bolt route, like I said before, and ended up tightening everything down. Everything looks good. I uh, went ahead and put in all my fittings uh, that I'm going to need. Um, these JIC type fittings uh, makes it real easy when you're wanting to take stuff on and off. So I got, got, got all that on there now. Um, also... We use some uh, Teflon tape uh, on the threads, as you can see here on the white and here. Um, make sure everything is sealed off and, and actually won't have any leaks. Um, so now what we're going to do is move forward and start getting our hoses ran and cut. So we're going to use three different size hoses. Uh, got one size here. Um, got my two end fittings. Another size here. Then I actually got to cut this biggest one and make it shorter. So... Um, as I get this done, I'll show you my progress through. Well, all the hoses are ran now. Got everything hooked up to my radiator. Uh, looks pretty nice. Went ahead and cleaned up everything. Used uh, zip ties and zip tied everything together. So as you can see, we got the expansion tank bolted down. Uh, the overflow uh, hose, uh, if the car heats some, it would actually spray the, uh, the excess overflow out that way. Uh, new return line to the water pump. Uh, basically took this line here that was really long, probably twice as long as it is here, and cut it in half and ran it basically a shorter route to the top of the radiator. And then here on the other end, on the exit side of the radiator, we put a new nice stainless hose with JIC fittings. And the main reason I did all this, we uh, at the racetrack, sometimes you may have issues. And if you need to change out a radiator or do any type of work really quick, um, it's real easy to break these fittings loose and just disconnect everything within a matter of seconds. You can pull everything right out. Before, I had a just plain rubber hose here with hose clamps, and you had to undo those, and it was time-consuming and aggravating trying to get off the end of those uh, slip-on style uh, barb fittings. And it's just, just a nice, cleaner, uh, easier, uh, easier way to work on this thing. So... As you can see, I've got a lot more room in here now between the new radiator fan setup, my hoses. So overall, it's a lot better, a lot nicer way to uh, do things. It should help us when we're doing maintenance and working on this thing. And also, just kind of if you're curious how we actually made these hoses, uh, this is what the JIC fitting looks like. And what you actually do is you, you basically unscrew this piece. There's, a, there's basically a top and a bottom portion. And when you get this off, you can see there's threads on the inside of this deal. So you basically 
slide the hose on this end. And once you get it in there, the hose will be, and you can basically see the rubber, rubber, I guess, in inside. This would actually slide on the, on the inside of that. And then there's threads on this side of the fitting and it all kind of just draws together and pulls tight. So if you notice, I've got tape on here and when you're cutting it, it makes the uh, strands from kind of standing out. Like you see right here, these things right here are, are painful. If you've never had a, a, a burr off of a cable or a uh, like a braided hose or a line like this, it's like a needle going in your finger if you, pr if you prick it too hard. So uh, putting this tape on there kind of helps prevent that and uh, makes it easier when trying to work it up on here and then force, force it on there. And again, once you slide it on there, tighten it down, it's good to go, it won't leak. And if for some reason you ever need to take it back apart, um, you can actually reuse these fittings. You can un unloosen it and take it back off and use it on another set of hose. So uh, anyways, we did that, you know, measured the length, cut the other end, and did it for the other side, and made it, like I said, made a really nice setup now. So hopefully we should be, should be good for the season and uh, shouldn't have to really worry about this stuff anymore. Just make sure everything's tight from uh, race to race and, and uh, check it out. So good job here, y'all. All right, y'all. I hope you really got some good information out of this. Uh, it's a really good how-to or do-it-yourself type setup. If you have any questions on the more nitty-gritty stuff on the actual fittings that we used, the links of our hose, be sure to comment below. Let us know your questions on this stuff. Uh, it really did help us out last season when we were at the track. Uh, made it really nice. So I, had, I did have a few more heating problems that we had to sort out, but it was really nice to be able to break those lines loose while we were there, get them on and off, try different things, and not chew up our whole day while we were there trying to do some testing uh, and just to sort through a lot of the stuff. It was really a time saver, guys. So a really nice, clean setup. You can really access everything, opens up everything really nice, and it's just a better, just well-rounded deal here. So, guys, if you stuck with us this long, I really do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us. You don't know how much it means to have all your support here. It really does. It encourages me to keep putting these out. We're going to keep doing it, y'all. It's getting really, really close to race season. I'm uh, going to be turning some laps here soon. Uh, maybe even going to some go-kart races with my friend Teddy and having a bunch of other things on here besides just this modified that I think you'll be interested in. So, be sure to stay tuned. We've got a lot of content coming out going to start trying to do more than one video a week maybe two or three because i've really got a lot of good ideas on this stuff that we're doing and getting a lot of good feedback from people so guys thank you keep coming back keep supporting us uh it really helps us out we're making this race car better faster more reliable we're going to be we're going to be hard to beat y'all we keep working at it uh this is going to be something that I've, i feel like i'm sharing with everybody then y'all will really be a part of it when we win have success and uh, just do good at the racetrack guys so i really do appreciate it y'all Thank y'all. Be sure to come back next week. We're going to keep doing this. As I always say, thank you for coming along on this ride. Until next time, be safe, be good in everything you do. Thank y'all.